Welcome to our editorial retouch, part two. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find us all up on Twitter and Facebook at Flurn. Talk with us. We'd love to hear from you. This is a really cool episode we're doing. We're doing multiple parts and we're editing this headshot, making it look really, really just refined and just classically good. Not like too over the top retouch, but just a classic nice retouch. In this section, we're going to be working on some hair and we're going to be doing dodging and burning as well. And uh, it's going to be real fun. Let's get into it. So here's our, um, here's our image of Asa. In the first episode, we went through and showed you guys how to actually get his skin from looking like this to like that. And if you guys missed it, check right down below. We're linking to the other episodes as well. In this episode, what we're going to do is, uh, first thing I'd like to draw a little bit more interest into his skin. So I'm gonna make a new layer, Shift Option Command N, and then Shift Option Command E for a stamp visible. Okay, with, with this, we're going to do a high pass filter, but I'm gonna do it, things in a little bit of a different order. You might not have seen this before. So first I'm gonna desaturate this layer. Uh, Shift Command U will just desaturate this entire layer, and that's exactly what we want. Now, I'm going to change this layer from normal down here to soft light, and um, we're going to like really show you how to like bring out cool highlights. It's gonna be very cool. So now this is a soft layer, layer. I'm gonna go to filter, other, and here to high pass. And what I wanna do is choose a radius, a relatively large radius. Down the lower radiuses, this is better for recovering like skin tone and sharpening. Up here higher, it's a little bit better for styling. And uh, that actually looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit okay there, and we can just turn this off and on to see what it does to his skin. Now you can choose to have this visible just on the highlights or just on the shadows, and you can use something called blend diff to do that. To get to blend if, just double click right there on your layer. Let's bring these things right over here. And then you can see for the underlying layer, if I don't want it to be vis visible where the underlying layer is darker, hold Alt or Option and grab this and just drag from the left to the right there. There we go. And let's just hit OK and see what this does now. Kind of brings those nice highlights in there. So keeping it relatively subtle. We can, we can bring back a little bit more and see what we've got. There we go. So just kind of like adding those highlights, but notice that it's not really affecting our shadow. So it's giving us like the nice highlight character that we really like about um, this sort of portrait. So let's just zoom out and uh, see how that looks. I'm gonna hit Command J on that, which is just gonna duplicate that layer. Next, we're gonna group these two. So shift click the two of those, hit Command G to group them together. There we go. We're gonna put a layer mask on this layer. Shift Option Command M will put a layer mask. Well, actually I, I keyboard shortcutted that already. You can hit, uh, go to Shift Option Command K to do your keyboard shortcuts, and you actually can assign your own keyboard shortcuts. So that's what I've done. So a layer mask, and now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command I on my layer mask, which is gonna invert it, and then just use a regular soft brush to just kind of paint this back wherever I want it. And this is just gonna add some really nice detail back. Now keep in mind, this is over top of everything that I've done with the image up until now. So the skin retouching that I did in part one is going to remain intact. This is bringing detail back, but it's doing it with that skin retouching. So it's not getting it from the original, it's doing it after the retouching, which is really nice. All right, so bringing that back just kind of gives it a little bit more life and a little bit of character here. I'm gonna do the same thing again, just because uh, I want to. <laughs> Slightly different effect. Uh, shift Option, Shift Command U is going to desaturate and uh, let's just bring a high pass filter in again. I'm gonna go, let's go ahead and change this to soft light so we know what we're doing. All right, and then a high pass. In this, we can just go a little bit farther. There we go. All right, and that looks pretty good. And this will just be for like general, maybe we'll use it on, on his neck and just certain parts. This is not gonna go everywhere. So again, let's put a layer mask on that and hit Command I to invert that layer mask. And then we can just decide where we want this to paint, paint it visible and not visible. And you can just shift click on this layer. So what we're doing here is, in essence, like a dodge and burn that is very well controlled. And I don't have to paint light or dark, and it's not really that confusing at all with a dodge and burn, because the soft light kind of like takes care of uh, pretty much everything for, for you. It just does all the work for you. It's, it's kind of nice. It's like Flurn. We do all the hard stuff, so then you can just see how we do it and then repeat it. It's kind of nice. All right, there we go. Let's make that visible, and then yeah, that looks pretty good. So there's our before and our after, just kind of making that skin um, stand out a little bit better. Maybe I'll just reduce my opacity just a little bit. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do, and 
Uh, mostly, I just think this is going to be really fun. Um, we're going to we're going to outline. We're going to give him a little bit of a trim here. Uh, so on a new layer, I'm going to hit P for the pen tool. Pen tool is really not that hard to use. Um, a lot of people kind of get caught up thinking it's difficult, but it's really not. Basically, just click and drag in the direction that you want to create your pen path. So I'm going to start up here, click and drag. We're going to come right down here over top of his hair. All right come right over there. Now I'm going to hold the control or the command key and grab that little anchor point and bring it up to there. All right, then this is going to come down in this direction. There we go. And out in that direction. We can decide how how tight we want our uh, our line. What is this called? Lining it up? Getting everything lined up? All right, there we go. We can decide how tight we want our line to be. In this case, we'll go relatively relatively tight. All right, and I'm going to come right down here. This is like if Asa were a professional football player or something like that. He would have this lined up probably every day. I, I have no idea. I, I don't know what else football players do when they're not playing football. Just get things lined up. That's my guess. All right, you can tell I play a lot of football. All right. Line up, play football. Line up, play football. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and just kind of close this out. Now what I'm going to do is right click in here and I'm going to say make selection. Feather the radius by 0.3 pixels. That looks okay. Now just to kind of check to make sure that my radius is good, I'm going to hit Q for the quick mask, which is going to allow me to see the selection that I just made. And I don't really care about this part on the right here. That's not important. I just care about here where the hair is. So it's still not good. What I want to do is give it a little bit of a blur. So because I'm in a quick mask, I can actually just blur a selection, which is nice. Go to filter, blur, and then down to Gaussian blur. And then there we can see something right about 3.4 looks pretty good. So we're going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit Q again, which just brings us back to our normal selection. So now with that pretty well defined, what I'm going to do is hit Command H, which is just going to hide the selection. It's still active. It's just hidden. And I'm going to grab my clone stamp tool and just clone stamp from outside of the selection into this selection. That's all I'm doing. So clone stamp tool from outside directly inside. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to give him like a pretty nice haircut, really. Um, now this is not going to be appropriate for every image that you take, obviously. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who don't have this type of haircut and you know, it just wouldn't apply at all. But in cases like this, it's pretty fun and just kind of cool to do. And shaping up someone's hair like this uh, really will just help to like bring in another level of refinement. There we go. And I'm just using the clone stamp tool to kind of get this in here. All right. There we go. Looking pretty good. So just going from the outside in. Don't, you don't need to go too crazy with this. In fact, I don't recommend having this visible at 100% opacity. In a second, I'm going to go through and use the eraser tool, the eraser tool to kind of like refine some of this stuff, just because it's um, it's just too visible. Like it, it looks too photoshopped at this point, um, but not too bad. So let's just make this invisible and then visible again. You can see that looks pretty decent. Now, let's just deselect this, and I'm going to put a layer mask on this, and we're just going to layer mask black, like right away, you know, like right from this very edge, just to make it look a little bit more natural. It's just too much right now. All right, so we should still have the same effect, just a little bit more of a natural looking. And there we go. Yeah, because your end goal is to make it look like you didn't use Photoshop. You want it to look like the hair was like that already. So pretty, uh, pretty fun. You can go through and do this, you know, however long you want. Let's do, um, yeah, let's do right over here as well. Why not? So on a new layer, let's just grab our pen tool again. We'll come back down here. All right. You know, my main goal with this, honestly, is just to show you guys that the pen tool is really not that bad to use. It's just, uh, it's pretty handy and it's worth learning how to use, I think. All right, there we go. And we can kind of bring that down there. Let's minus that point out there. Okay, cool. And we'll come up right around here. 
and join up with our original. Okay, looking good. So let's go ahead and turn that into selection. Again, right click, go to make selection. You just hit Q and then Gaussian blur again. All your settings will stay the same. So I'm gonna hit Q to go back to where I was. And then within this selection, I'm gonna just basically do the same thing. Hit Command H, which is hide. There we go. And we're gonna go right up to the edge here. Go to the edge. There we go. And just cold stamping from the outside in. Kind of cleans everything up. All right. Kind of fun to retouch facial hair. I don't get to do it nearly as often as I'd like. All right. There we go. Looking pretty good. So that's a nice cleaned edge there. Let's just deselect. I'll put a layer mask on there. And again, we'll just paint black. So it'll allow it to kind of come in. But having that nice pen selection just gives you something that is, uh, it's just a little bit better than just grabbing a brush tool and going for it, as it were. All right, on uh, a new layer, I'm gonna grab my clone stamp tool. We're gonna clone stamp from here straight up there, like that. Change this layer from normal down here to darken. And it's just gonna allow me to put a little bit more hair right there to fill that in. All right, looking pretty good. And then if you really want to, you can go on a new layer. I'm just gonna grab like a, make a really small brush here. And um, you just paint your own hair if you wanna do that too. Let's make our brush a little bit smaller. All right. There we go. And let's just delete that layer, create a new one, and then with our brush tool, just start painting some of these, some of this hair in there. If you want your edge to be a little bit more full. And if you are gonna add some other color in there, like if you wanted to add some highlight or some of these lighter color hairs, things like that, you can totally do that. Um, I just recommend letting, you know, putting down a dark layer first and then adding that, adding that highlight over top. All right, and you could create a custom brush for this. I'm just using, I'm just using a very small brush to kind of make these brush strokes. And it's just, you know, hair. Just, I'm just clicking and making different shapes with my brush. Not trying to make every single hair at once. Just taking my time, hanging out, making hair. This is what I do with my time. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> and now you're watching me do it, <laughs> which is, who's the joke on now? All right, there we go. Just made hair with a brush tool, pretty easy. Let me just move this layer in a second so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm just, I've got my tablet here and I'm just painting like little random shapes. And I just chose a brush that happened to be about the same size as the hair in this image. And then you could just paint the hair. It's not that hard. So if I move this, you can see, this is what I was doing. Just painting little, little things like that. Um, but there we go. It looks like, looks like some hair now. So that's, uh, that works pretty well. Cool, why not? Let's put a layer mask on that and blend it in just a little bit. There we go, especially up there. And uh, yeah, we've got a bit of a haircut now, which is kind of fun. All right, let's go ahead and group those layers. So this is before and the after with the hair. Let's see what we've got. Looking good, Asa. I'm gonna put a layer mask on there, just fade that out just a little bit there. All right. There we go just look a little bit more natural. And then this is our shine. So really quickly, this is what we've done in this episode. We've added the shine and uh, cleaned up some hair. Not too bad. All right, thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Welcome to Flurn. I don't know why I said that. You were just watched Flurn. You already know what it is. Um, in our next episode, we're going to be stylizing this portrait even more, refining it up, and then uh, we're gonna be working with some color as well. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. I hope you have a great life. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Hi, guys. Kat from Flirn here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flirn.com. Also, check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar, making an epic burger, and lighting a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, 
please sign up for our newsletter because it's a free tutorial. It's awesome.